The burning of the Library of Alexandria certainly ranks among the worst crimes ever committed against humanity. And it is widely believed that the losses of scientific research, including that of physics and medicine, as well as the losses of cultural and historical knowledge and documentation, set back the progress of human civilization by at least a thousand years. Now, if you're not familiar, the Library of Alexandria was located in Alexandria, Egypt, which was, by the way, named after Alexander the Great, and is believed to have been burnt down by Julius Caesar in the year 48 BC. However, this is the subject of much debate, and I'll get into that later in this video. Now, the Library of Alexandria was more than just a library. It was a research center. In fact, you could even credit it for being the first model, essentially, of a university. In fact, it even had the world's first medical school. And it existed for almost 700 years prior to being burnt down. So it makes you stop and think. If that was 2,000 years ago and we have so little knowledge of it and so much mystery surrounding it, what historical documentation and knowledge did they have at that point in time dating back thousands of years? So like I said, there's far more that we don't know than we do know about it. Such as, was it multiple stories? We, we think it was right on the harbor. However, according to ancient sources, the Library of Alexandria was described to have been comprising of a collection of scrolls, Greek columns, a room for shared dining, a reading room, meeting rooms, gardens, lecture halls, and essentially, like I said, the creation of the first model of a university campus. The library itself is known to have had uh, an acquisitions department and a cataloging department as well. And we know that it had a hall containing shelves of collections of papyrus scrolls known as bibliothecae. And according to popular description, there was an inscription above the shelves that read, quote, the place of the cure of the soul. So how many scrolls did they have? Well, the estimates vary. Nobody actually knows for sure, and nobody actually knows what was in those scrolls that burnt into ashes. However, estimates conclude anywhere between 400,000 to as much as 700,000 scrolls. And the only thing that actually exists today is a basement, what's called a serapium, which is believed to have not even been at the actual location of the Library of Alexandria itself. And you can see the pictures of it here. What's beyond interesting about the Library of Alexandria is the extent that they went to gather information and historical and cultural documentation from all over the world. And the library wanted everything. Babylonian texts, Hebrew, Turkish, anything and everything was the goal. In fact, ships that came to the harbor were required to hand over books that they had as well as documentation and, and blueprints essentially of ships and any other type of technology, which originals would be kept in the library and you had professional scribes that would make a copy of the exact original and hand the copy over to the owner. And they did all this for the purposes of posterity. However, nowadays, it's kind of funny that if this happened nowadays, I would be accusing them of, well, big government. <laughs> but one can only imagine what they had in there. I mean, any source will agree that there was probably at least 500,000 scrolls. And like I said, some estimating as high as 700,000 scrolls. And by the way, that reminds me. According to legend, the earliest Greek translation of the Old Testament was written in the city of Alexandria, which many speculate, well then okay, maybe it was written inside the Library of Alexandria. Before I go into the details of the destruction of the library, let me share with you some of the people that either studied there, taught there, or conducted research there. For example, you have Hipparchus, an astronomer and the founder of trigonometry, who also discovered the precession of the equinoxes and mapped star constellations and was the first to establish various brightness levels of stars. And then, of course, you had Euclid, the most famous teacher of mathematics, who was the founder of systemized geometry. And then you had Dionysus Thrax, who defined various parts of speech, such as nouns, verbs, pronouns, prepositions, and etc. So I mentioned earlier that there was also a medical school established within the Library of Alexandria, which was the world's first. And it was established by Herophilus, who was known as the father of anatomy, who identified that the brain was where thinking came from and not the heart, which was believed for thousands of years. But brilliant people that have visited or taught or learned at the Library of Alexandria doesn't stop there. Take Archimedes, for example, who's famous for saying, Eureka, I have found it, or that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and also his famous quote about, give me a lever long enough and a falcon to which to place it, and I shall move the world. Another person, and you'll find this really interesting, is Huron of Alexandria, who was a mathematician, and who is known and believed to have created the very first working model of a steam engine, 2,000 years before James Watts. Let me give you just one last example, which is really impressive. 
Eratosthenes, who was the very first person to identify that the Earth rotated around the Sun, and he did so 1800 years before Copernicus. And he was also the very first person to find the circumference of the Earth, and he estimated it correctly to within 200 miles. And by the way, he did this by observing shadows in Alexandria compared to the south of Egypt at noon on the very same day, and calculating the size of each shadow, and that the distance between the two ancient cities all correlated and was able to identify, like I said, the circumference of Earth within 200 miles. I mean, isn't that just insane? And yet you probably didn't even, you never heard of that, have you? I, I know I hadn't until I started researching this, right? And by the way, Eratosthenes also created the sieve, which is the famous model for quickly identifying prime numbers. These are just a few examples, and this is just what we know of. I mean, one can only imagine who else had visited the Library of Alexandria whose works were just lost into ashes. So let me transition now into the burning of the Library of Alexandria. Now, there are different theories on this, and it is a subject of much debate. However, it is widely accepted, and honestly, the timetable really conclusively shows that it had to have been Julius Caesar in the year 48 BC. And it's not to say that there may have not been more than one attack, such as the Aurelian in, uh, invasion in the 3rd century AD, or the decree of Coptic Pope uh, Theophilus in the 391 AD, and there's even been suggestions of a Muslim conquest in 60, uh, 642 AD or thereafter. Guys, that's all BS. It was Julius Caesar. It's so obvious. The timetable fits it perfectly. Unless we forget, this guy was a conqueror. The Caesars, that's what they did. They tried to conquer the whole world, and they took over as much of it as they possibly could. And anyone that wasn't one of them was, well, referred to as a barbarian for the most part. I mean, look at this map. And this was taken at the height of the Roman Empire, which was just, by the way, 17 years after Julius Caesar had died. And, I mean, do you think they took over all these lands by, I don't know, just asking for it? I mean, no, they, they killed everyone. They conquered it. And this is why many people suggest that perhaps the Vatican archives may have hidden knowledge about what happened to the Library of Alexandria, or perhaps even ancient scrolls or copies of ancient scrolls that may have survived the fire. Don't forget, history has been written by those who have conquered others, right? The significance of the loss of the Library of Alexandria cannot be overstated. Without a doubt, it set back human civilization and the progress of it by at least a thousand years. And this reminds me of a quote by Aristotle. The fate of empires depends on the education of youth. And when you destroy information, when you destroy knowledge in historical context and documentation, it really screws over humanity for not being able to learn of the lessons of the past. And we're seeing this in modern times, and essentially that people, kids, what they're learning in school, think about how much is omitted. Now, I'm not going to say that the Library of Alexandria is omitted from school teachings. I mean, I, I don't remember being taught about it at all, at least not in depth whatsoever to the things I shared with you today. I mean, if I did learn about it in school, because I can't say either way, I don't want to say they're not teaching it. I mean, if there is, though, I mean, what is it? Like a, a sentence included in some paragraph about uh, Alexandria, Egypt, and how they had a library that burnt down? I mean, it seems that, I mean, ask how many people you know who have ever heard of Library of Alexandria. I mean, yeah, most people watching this video probably have heard about it. But, I mean, I guarantee if you walked down the street and asked anyone else, 99 out of 100 people wouldn't even know what you're talking about. And that's part of the problem, guys. Anyways, guys, I'll leave it at that. I'm Jimmy. This is Bright Insight. Like and subscribe and leave me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are and share any information you may have on this topic because it is beyond interesting. Anyways, guys, I'll leave it there. Take care, everybody.